before we get into this advent video where we talk about audiobooks we just thought we'd share with you some exciting news and that is that we have an affiliate scheme with audible uh so please click the link below uh and that will help us out and you can sign up for a free trial yeah so if you are interested in any of the books that we talk about on uh this show we've not picked them up um yeah it really helps the show out if you click through the link and sign up to audible um uh it's what we we all do um anyway it's like it's i think it's seven pound a month isn't it and you get a free book each month um but the first month's free um if you've not signed up before um but yeah, it's uh, so this may seem a little jarring because we're going to look very different when you uh, have a look in the next thing, uh, the next video in a second. But yeah, any help that you can do by clicking through the link would be great. Yeah, and you can cancel any time. So if you just wanted to get your free book, then cancel it. And all the Games Workshop publications are available on Audible as well. So if you're a fan of Black Library, even if you're, you don't fall down the Sanderson rabbit hole that we're about to talk about, then um, <laughs> definitely, definitely Spoilers. click the link and uh, get yourself a, uh, a free book uh, and help us out. So thanks, guys. We'll get to the video. Cheers. Welcome to another Face Hammer Advent video. Um, so thanks, to everyone, who's been following our series. I've got a stupid hat on today to get into the spirit. Yeah, Les he, this... I'd say it's stupid. Yeah, you know, I'm waiting for Les to get I'm his baubles gonna... out. but Not a chance, mate. I haven't got any Christmas decorations. Like, what's the point? <laughs> You right. said you were going to last video. Don't tell me I bought out. Well, I might, I'm going to, like, I may. Okay, so if I, if I go to Tesco's and I see one of the white sprays that you can get, like, I might spray my beard before oh, Christmas. You're just too For the Christmas school, episode. Yes, that's the thing. Mate, I don't have any Christmas decorations. Like, it's, 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 no, like, it's just me. I, I live by myself. All I do is I put them up, the cats fucking destroy them, and then I take them <laughs> down and get annoyed. So, like, there's just no point. Like, I'll go and enjoy Christmas at my family, like, with my parents and my yeah, brother and like, all that sort of stuff. To be honest, like, although I did get a treat, yeah. but I haven't bothered to put it up this year because I can't be asked. Um, right, okay. <laughs> We're well, so not... cool, yeah. Well, it's not like anyone's <laughs> coming over, is it? So, you know, it's fine. No, um, no, that's true. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we thought we'd do a video... Um, um, about audiobooks um yes now this is when we when we're like painting and stuff and you need something in the background rather than having tv having a good audiobook's a great thing uh, particularly if you've got a set of what are like uh, wireless headphones like les and myself are toting right now um, which allows you to walk around the house and do stuff like housework and stuff or cook your dinner while you're listening um so we listen to quite a lot of audiobooks uh so les does a lot more than i do now because I, I tend to not not spend much time listening to things because i'm always doing something else um or he's playing TV. an online mo massively multiplayer role-playing game instead really. which you just start <laughs> <that. laughs> no i generally because also like with with like yeah. editing podcasts as i normally listen to my our own podcasts while i'm doing that rather yeah. than audiobooks and because i'm not commuting anymore i don't have like the public transport commute to zone out the world of, yeah. of people um but we thought we'd do a video talking about some of the best sort of fantasy books that are not gw black library because obviously yeah. if you're into gw you probably know what they are anyway and they're yeah, available on audible it's... i think these ones as well they're like, they're more like a series of like because if i think picking standalone audiobooks and picking a, a, a lot of these the books that are in the a lot of the, the books that we're going to cover in this series they're like a massive interlinking story like a good tv show i mean there are some really good standalone books but uh you know a lot of the ones that we've touched on here it's almost like the top five series of books as opposed to individual ones because like i think that that's a standalone books is actually quite a difficult one to mm to pick out i think there's very few quality i mean that, that, that there are but some out there like you know and i can probably reel some off because i'm a massive fan of stephen king and different things like that but there are some very good single books but these are all part of like a sort of like a wider sort of like tale story if that makes sense like we we consume our books kind of the same way as we consume our tv series which is we want it to be like quite epic and like you know with lots of intrigue on demand and, and binging is what you're saying yeah <laughs> so yeah, um yeah <laughs> um so i guess we should start on uh, but before we get into into it into it then basically if you don't yeah. know what audible is it's um an amazon affiliated business where basically you yeah. get you can subscribe and get credits and there's an app on your phone and you basically can go i want this audio book goes into your library you can listen to it and it's someone reading the book to you 
so you don't have to read because yeah. you need your eyes for painting so you can listen to a story and what i will stress is that a good book doesn't necessarily mean it's a good audio book because yeah. there are some books which are really good but then if the narration is bad or you don't like the way the narrator does it then you're not going to get on with it so always listen yeah. to the sample <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, before you, you cannot in. go wrong with Kate Redding and Michael <coughs> Kramer, like um, they are probably my two favourite um, audiobook like voice actors, I guess. Um, I think like John really... John Keeble for the GW stuff's really good as well. Like, yeah, you know, um, yeah, it's... but it's it, infinitely it... like the Horus Heresy series with Jonathan Keeble's like amazing. Like anyone that isn't him, I tend to like not really like listen to as much. I mean, the story could be good, and I find that. Uh, with, with a GW book, like I, I find that if I actually read it, like you know, page like Kindle or or actual like proper book and break the spine and read it, I find I'm enjoying them a lot more than I do the audiobooks unless it's read by Jonathan Keeble. I think he is like the ace in their like you know their deck per se. Um, yeah, think... so I think without further ado, let's go into the top five. And we've got some honorable mentions as well. Uh, we're not yeah. going to do you want to do the honorable mentions first or last after do after. the honorable mentions last. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're not going to spoil any of the the big key stories, um, particularly. Well, that's why people because are into... you've got a rep, but you know, I have got a rep for spoiler and stuff. <laughs> so. Ask <laughs> Russ about the Infinity War one. Oh, a... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Watching Ant Man was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, before you'd see Infinity mm. War. So, so we start at number five with a bullet. Yeah, so it's on the screen now. So go on then on the screen now okay cool yeah i can't so, see the screen it's um, david, so yeah david gemmel isn't it so david gemmel on the draenei saga um so me personally um i grew up with the, this series of books my father um sort of force fed them to me from the age of 12 like even my family home is called wayland um which is based after one of david gemmel's sort of like prominent characters called waylander the assassin um if you like sort of like uh, swords and sorcery like monsters epic battles um sort of like real page turnery action type stories this is the series for you um i've collected it as the drenai saga because the drenai it's whilst there are sort of specific books that follow on from each other the it's all based in this drenai universe and and like one of the things that me and russ were talking about before coming on air was do you read it via in like the published book order or do you read it in the chronological order because they take part over like many hundreds of years um so like i know the first book in the published series like his first book ever published was legend um uh which is based around um, an old warrior dress but that is probably like three quarters of the way through the actual saga if you follow it in a chronological order because when he's um, always so an old man isn't it so yeah he's almost, it's like, he's almost like he's 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 already a legend and I guess he's a legend I've, yeah. I've, I've read legend and i've read waylander but i haven't read the others so yeah. i think yeah he well, i say read i've listened to <laughs> so okay. um but i guess he like in that i haven't i mean i'm assuming then that in others that it goes back and sort of talks well, about the how he legend of, a legend the legend of death draft uh, sorry the legend of death walker is how the nadar named him death walker Right. Um, and then you've got the um, the first Chronicles of Dress the Legend, which tells you his origin story um, and how that sort of like interlinks with everything um, throughout the sort of like the Draenei. And then you've got like the later ones, which is yeah. like the Winter Warriors, which takes place many, many hundreds of years after Legend. I, I mean, fundamentally, so, like some people out there would be screaming at us why they're not number one, right? Because fundamentally... The reason they're called the David Gemmel Awards is, is because it's, it's like, David Gemmel. And and if you into AOS, you're gonna like this sort of stuff. As particularly, I think they're a yeah. really good bridge from the fantasy, like the the Warhammer novels, into like yeah. more. I don't use word in depth, but I sort of think the the, yeah. the the Games Workshop ones are very kind of like pick up, put down, pulp fiction type yeah. stuff. Whereas like there are some fantasy stuff that's quite heavy going and quite rich and deep, and this yeah. is a nice balance between it's, that it's it's they, the two, almost yeah. the same vein as the gw books do you know what so, I, mean? Like, I mean for for me the reason i've like i've, I've put them because like essentially i comprise the list and this is like and me and russ are just discussing it the reason it's number five in the series for me is that like i think legend came out in like 1970 like you know these are a little bit dated like you know with the way that they are as in like the fantasy tropes and stuff um it's the same if you read like um me and liam cook to discuss um 
the magician and the rift war series and i tried to read the rift war listen to the rift war series but to me it just feels like like 1980s sort of like swords and sorcery type stuff which yeah. um whilst early doors i would have loved that like you know as a like a teenager growing up like i, I just feel like my my palette has matured a little bit um, it almost and... feels like they're they've kind of been like because other people have borrowed from those and used it and, and, yeah. and, and, and you almost if you didn't listen to it at the time or read at the time almost feels like they're a little bit kind of um oh, stale yeah but actually they weren't it, at the time they were like they at were the like time they were like in but yeah as you, it's, it's like it, you know so it's quite it's like, funny it, really but Drostal knock is like a pivotal thing in one of the le- in with the the actual Drenai saga, which is a, a a fortress with nine walls with a killing ground between each wall, which is like hundreds of meters. And it's like it that that trope. I'm not sure if it was the first time because it's probably just taken from sort of like ancient history, and someone's probably going to correct me in the, the, the comments below. <laughs> I'm sure, it's but like that's the somewhere. that's the first time that I remember that being taken place. And then I've noticed it in so many different like things going forward i think there's an ultramarine story which i'm sure that the guy will kick off and let someone will tell me not like i think it's one of the um the uh the when the the tyranids invade ultramar there's a story where like they break in between like this nine wall fortress mm. and like they've got killing grounds so like for me it was like it, it it set it it sort of like it set me on my path and i still think that there's a lot of opportunity to go back and revisit it i know dan mitchell like friend of the show uh and martin Moran have talked about um sort of like getting into this this way and you, you know you can either go chronological order which you can google or you can go published which is the way that they were published so i personally go chronological because i feel like it tells yeah. a much richer story i but think i would published. now knowing yeah. that there is an order like that that i started and yeah published but i'll change it's like the machete it. the machete order right for star wars yeah. so because it's Darth um, Vader's so... story and no one else matters um yeah, yeah. so um <laughs> number four yeah so You've put these as the James Islington, isn't it? Which is the uh, the Lacanius trilogy. Yeah, this is like an Australian author. Quite a new series of books. I believe they came out in twenty sixteen ish. Um, I discovered this guy um, because Michael Kramer narrates the book. Because Michael Kramer is such a good audio, uh, like like audio um, actor, voice actor, um, that I just googled, like you know, I searched via him on Audible, um, and I really got into the story. Um, it's quite quite an in-depth story it's not one that you can like touch on it's very um i mean that the, there's the, the magic system in it's quite it takes a lot to get your head around because you've read this this one as well haven't you Russ? Like i think the first two yeah i'm not read. sure if i've done the third one um yet no. i don't know if that came out recently i might have done yeah, i, I found recently. that i i had this moment where i thought i haven't listened to these and i started listening to it because no, i have listened to this um, yeah it's but it's um it's it's okay. I th- I do like it. I think it's a good series. I think there's some good concepts in there. So, um, it's yeah. I think the the whole sort of like um, it, it rough overview is the standard sort of trope of there is a dark god. Like you know, it's like uh, there's a dark thing that's won, and they. Uh, this they is the one where he like starts back. off going to like a school, and then like yeah, yeah, happens it's, at it's school, like it always goes on a journey. Yeah, yeah. And then, like and you, you learn he, more about what's good. he's almost discovering yeah. something, and you're discovering it with them. yeah. It's and... it's your standard fantasy trope, right? Which is yeah. like you know, it is a it's like they um they they do it quite well um in one of the books that we we discuss for honorable mention, where it's just like here is something really really like uh, you know get you open the page and it's like the first chapter is like this is me setting the promise of the story this is me saying this is going to be a dark horrible story and then you read that and it's like it comes to like a really quick end and then then you're in then you're like following this guy in a village and it like because it's just like this is what the story is about but we're going to then put you through this typical fantasy tropes of a, a, a like a journey of a hero becoming a hero and then eventually doing that sort of like the great thing that he's promised to do and with the Lycanius trilogy the reason I've I enjoyed it so much is that whilst it has got that to it which is your standard sort of like fantasy trope um it's very odd with like uh the magic system there's like two sorts one that you take from death one that you take from life like uh and was it augers which when someone yeah augers yeah like they breathe black smoke uh they see people when they lie as black smoke and stuff it's very very interesting and the story itself's 
I thought was really cool. I mean, it, to be honest, like the last third of the last book was a bit like draggy for me, but I think that's because it's such an in-depth world. But it's quite a good, it's quite them. a short in terms of what we're talking about. It's quite a short series. Yeah. It's only three books. Yeah, it's only so, three books on this one. Which yeah. is nice because sometimes you look at something like, we'll talk about later, but then you go with there's yeah, like 20 odd books. You're like, actually, that's quite a hurdle. Yeah. It's a bit like when you look at a yeah. series and you mirror there's been 11 seasons and you think, do I want to start this really? Um, yeah, yeah. It was the same. That's a problem that Drenai stuff will have as well because it's massive. Yeah. So, so what do you, it's on to three? Yeah. So this is the Brian Staveley, Staveley. Yeah. Pronounce so, his name wrong. So I, um, I always pronounce it wrong. Um, so this for me, um, is uh, I, I was discussing this actually like this morning with one of my friends, Liam Cook. Um, I, I feel like this series could be in like um, my top three of all time, just because of how different it was when I I, I started reading it. Um, you know, essentially, it's the Unhewn Throne, uh, the Chronicles of the Unhewn Throne, which has got like a little bit of a political intrigue uh, element to it, and it's roughly based around three children of an emperor. Um, and the world's amazing. I was talking to Laurie uh, Huggett Wild about it. It's like they've got essentially the SAS or like the Navy SEALs, and they ride giant falcons, and they've got a, a, like a wizard and a, a demolition expert and a sniper, and they all ride on yeah, the it's like a, these giant it's falcons. It's like a special forces team on the back of it. Is it a Kestrel? Yeah. They're called the Kestrels. They're called they? Ket- Ketral. Ketral. They're called the oh, Ket- right, yeah. yeah. And, and then, then you've got sort of like warrior monks and stuff. Because you basically got three children. One's like brought up in court. One's brought up in this like military wing, and the other one's brought up in yeah. like a religious priest place. So basically, it's like this very typical. You know, if you're the emperor, your children go off and do different things. Yeah. Um, and it's the story of those, um, those those kids, pe- those kids going through their protective journeys and those yeah. interlocking and coming back together. Um, it's quite clever. It's quite it's quite good. It's entertaining. So yeah. I definitely enjoyed it. So. I, yeah, I think one of the things that I really enjoyed about it is that, like, with regards to, as a Warhammer fan, it's like, when people say, oh, Korn is the god of death, and you think of Red and Nurgle of Decay and Slanesh of Excess and, like, Kazinch of, like, Change, that, that Brian Staveley created a very, like, a, a really sort of, like, nice tapestry of, of their gods, and, like, by the end of the stories, you kind of, because there's so many different elements that it's got, like, the religious uh undertow to it like um it's all like they've got the, the god of murder the god of pain and stuff yeah. like that and you you kind of like uh, you know what they are when someone says like i think one's called hull which is the god of darkness like you then because they do hull's trial and you then go you'd start to know those sort of tropes almost like you would when someone says oh corn is the god of you know the, the god of rage you know so i always um, find it's a challenge when you read fantasy books because they try and introduce a mechanic or a or a belief system that's different and how that's done is quite key i think to a good fantasy yeah. novel yeah then... it's it's i think you're right i think that is the you need to have um a really good sort of like you know like that even like a fat like you know the religious stuff or like the magic stuff it needs to be it getting those right then enhances the story if you get them wrong then it doesn't it's like you, know. you touched on with the previous set is that the magic system like because it is it is the best thing in that book is how that unfolds and and, yeah. and and even as the understanding of the the main character of that becomes more because i, I quite like the fact they that it's basically outlawed and they shackle yeah. people don't they so they basically yeah. say you can't you're not allowed to use magic if you're not licensed, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's quite, just quite cool. And I've used that in D and D actually when, as part of my, you know, if you've got like an area where like yeah. magic's basically needs to be controlled, it's frowned upon. And I know it's, if you play dragon age, there's, there's quite a bit in there about it as well. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, but the emperor's blades, the first, I mean, it is a good series and it's quite, again, it's a short series, so it's quite nice. Yeah. To... I mean, they just, I think there's the fourth book, uh which hasn't which has just been announced comes out in april next year which i'm really looking forward to mm. um so that'll be really because i i mean not the fourth book it's the fifth book technically because there's a prequel but i yeah. don't really i didn't really enjoy the prequel yeah that was um, that was the one that done by it on, on a character you meet in the series as like a first person yeah. book wasn't it yeah so i haven't yeah, i've got that i think skull sworn skull like skull sworn yeah yeah so um, i haven't actually um i haven't actually read that one yet um no it's it, it was it was okay i just didn't it didn't quite 
Um, it, I, I think it's because I didn't like that character in the series. I'm sure some people do, but like because I didn't really like like that character, mm. I would have much like I would have much the prequel of it, Valin. But then I suppose the the actual three books are Valin's story anyway, which is one of the 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 emperor's children yeah um i, I didn't kind of like it that much um so i guess we're on to number two now like yeah. number two this is number two and number one may bleed <laughs> into one another yeah you, um you, which yeah it's it's kind of uh it's kind of funny i know like, it's quite yeah so like number two for me is as as a standalone series to get into is the stormlight archive by brandon sanderson um and it's very difficult uh, for me to talk, discuss this without giving away spoilers if you've not read it. But essentially, um, it is high fantasy, high, epic, st- uh, epic battles um, uh, based around many, many interlinking different characters. But the first book, The Way of Kings, is based around uh, a slave called Kaladin who is who discovers that he's on the path to become a a knight radiant who were sort of like magical storm infused people that have armor and swords that can cut through anything um and that is me dumbing it down quite a lot um without sort of like giving away quite a lot of uh you know stories uh like informa- information they're on a bat they're in like uh, a place called the shattered plains where the the entire world's just like been shattered by like previous battles um and they're trying to sort of like kill a, a, an opposing army that murdered their king um and it's it's just there's so much to it without giving away spoilers so maybe russ is probably the better person to discuss <laughs> start this one um, off because i'll just i've just read the fourth book so i i would i've only read the because the, the fourth book ribbon of wars just literally just come out and i haven't yeah. started that yet because i want to go back and listen to Oathbreaker again um it is an extremely deep long rich series so i would say that i wouldn't start with these if you've not done anything other than gw stuff but once you've done a couple of the other series strap yourself in because i think they're like 50 hours unabridged so yeah um if you did i think four... on the run up it was i think the run up to it i did the maths didn't i because dan mitchell was like oh i might it's listen like 310 to 310 hours or something stupid. 300 yeah it's ridiculous yeah you have to do i think there was just about enough hours in the month for him to listen to it before yeah. it got released if he just did that and slept so um, I w- you know the yeah. rhythm of wars fifty eight hours like which yeah. is the fourth book. So um, it it sounds like a big chunk of commitment and it is, but it's very very rewarding. I think um, there's there's some moments in those books that will stay with you, um, like that are just yeah. amazing, and because the character development um, is so strong, that you really really care about the characters and then when stuff happens it's pretty epic and um i mean it is an epic series so i would say that it's 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 undoubtedly the best fantasy series that is out at the moment in my opinion from what i've listened to it's it's yeah it's just amazing there's i always have a conversation with somebody who gets into the book and i'm just go like when you get to uh, there's going to be a point and when you get to that point just ring me and we'll have a chat about it and and every single person rings me four times before they get to the actual point that I'm yeah. talking about. Um, like I remember saying it to Dan Heelan and stuff. It was just, yeah, it's been, it, it's been, it, it's brilliant. Um, this book series, like, you know, I started this before me and you were friends, I believe. It was like, I think it was like just before me and you were friends. Cause I, I listed, sure. I read another one of his books before because i I was i downloaded it i pre-ordered it on itunes before i had an audible account and i've got it on itunes that i paid like 40 quid for the book uh, because i'd read a previous one two previous books of brandon sanderson um back then um which we'll now segue into which is the my number one choice of series to listen to whilst you're painting if you've got the time yeah so Um... This is called the Cosmere, and so there's a selection of books. Now I'm not sure what seat, what Russ has got up on the screen at the moment because I can't see it at the moment. Okay, so essentially Brandon Sanderson's worlds are all linked via he calls it the Cosmere. So you've got the Stormlight Archives, which is we've just touched on as being like a massive story on its own right. 
you've then got the final empire and the mistborn series which are six books um based um around a different sort of like group of characters in a different world you've got elantris and you've got warbreaker um, and all of these books take place in the same universe and they all interlink yeah um but I, which is I, why yeah sorry they do around. but i would say that that they only i think they and and i might be wrong but i think they only really interlink in the words of Brady the stormlight archives, stormlight archives yeah. series because yeah they were written as standalone things and i think he's joined them up into the cosmo and then he's done uh, novellas and stuff in between he and had then, an overarching thing yeah. where he wants and the universe as being it all taking place in this universe and then they were standalone novels that he i think his magnum opus is the stormlight archives and he wanted them all to yes, feed into that. feed into that so, but like there's no mention yeah. if you listen to like oh in, um, in elantris and the, warbreaker yeah, there's no stuff. like references to stuff that's in mistborn in no you know warbreaker or elantris you know, so there's no. no but um so, but there is references backwards with yes. from Stormlight Archives to yeah, that's what I mean. It's you know. like it's almost like that's the the thing that's threading them all together. Um, now, for me, like I think if you start with any Brandon Sanderson stuff, you should start with Mistborn, which was because yeah. he wrote that after he did um, uh, Warbreaker and Elantris, I believe. Yeah, it was Warbreaker Elantris, and then he was halfway through the Mistborn, the first three Mistborn books when he got commissioned to do the finish off the wheel of time robert jordan's wheel of time so yeah. that was his first big foray in the, the world of writing and um like for me like mistborn is a bit like oceans 11 meets matrix meets fantasy is probably the best way to describe yeah. it it's um, it's got the best magic system the most belie- like that i've ever read in a book mm. i think i can't so, think I mean, of i mean even though i love the stormlight stuff i think this is better I, I think it's it's better because it is digestible. I think the problem with Stormlight is it is like it does feel like a massive undertaking. Whereas like with these three, it you can you although there's six books, the the other yeah. three books are set in the future, and if you yeah. think that the the final empire and those you know that those first three Mistborn books almost is like the origin story for the world that the next set are set in. So they're yeah. like, if you think of it in like modern times, it's almost like the Alloy of Law and and those ones are set. They're Final like a detective Empire series, and... kind of like, yeah. like Sherlock Holmes, turn of the century, eighteen hundred, nineteen hundred, yeah. sort of sort of time, it, like Wild West type elements, guns, etc. Whereas like the other yeah. set is there aren't guns. It's like sword and ball like and fun. stuff like that. But there's yeah. no. But what's quite interesting is, I don't think it gives anything away, is that the the powers are all linked to metal. So there's a yeah. group of metals, and <clears throat> you can burn the metal in your body. So so you, you basically would drink, like, I don't know, like copper, for example, and that allows yeah. you to unlock a power. <clears throat> and if you've got one, there's two powers for each metal, basically, and... There are people called Mistborn, which have access to all of them. Yeah. So some people yeah, can it's... only do steel, some can only do pewter, some can only do copper, yeah. but some people can do all the metals. And it's very rare in the, the universe for people to be a Mistborn, and yeah. it's usually passed on via sort of like um, you know genetics and family lineage and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think the the Mistborn series uh, is a great jumping on point. If that's, I mean, it's quite nice actually because Sanderson's actually got on his website a Cosmere jump on sort of spidergram, right, which okay. is jump on here, jump on here, jump on here, and then you can read them in whatever order you like. But yeah, yeah I mean, for me, I would go, uh, I'd do Mistborn, I'd do one, two, three Mistborn, and then do four, five, six, then do Elantris Warbringer, then do the Stormlight. Yeah, so I would. Do. I think that's basically what I did. Yeah, like, because Elantris and um, I think I did the first Warbreaker. book of. Yeah, I think I did them in between waiting for books. Yeah, like because although they're quite good, like Elantris is like about a city that's walled off and you know stuff like that. So there's there's all that, and then War Warbreaker, it, it talks about like colors. colors and magic is color and 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 yeah that sort of thing. So. They're okay. Like I, I mean, they are his earlier books, so they're. I found them a little like when you've listened to Miss. He's not as refined. Yeah, you, you as... go. They don't feel 
as polished as Mistborn yeah. was. So, and then if you read the, the Stormlight, Mistborn... but they're still very good. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to um, rereading Elantris and Warbreaker um, again because of where I am with the Mistborn series. Like you know, certain things, I've not read those books for over ten years, I think. Mm. So it's um, I, I, for me, it's going to be really nice to go back and sort of touch on those, um, which is what you know, just because. It, it, it'd be nice to pick up on little things that he's threads that he's laid down um and yeah i mean like, it is a bit of a brandon sanderson sort of like if you didn't tell brandon sanderson's my probably my favorite author um and i i know me russ and byron discuss a lot of the sort of like the points that uh, about you know from from the stormlight archives um and i always recommend Mistborn to people and we haven't even touched on his stuff that isn't Cosmia related, like you know, um, which are the Reckoner series and the Skyward series, which are both really good series if you want to get into them yourselves. Uh, but we're not going to really cover them too much here because we wax lyrical about all the other stuff he's done. Mm. Um, I'd say yeah, that, that the uh, Reckoners is a lot more a lot palatable, more palatable, and a lot more consumable. Yeah. So if you're jumping Page turners, from yeah. GW, and especially if you like superhero type stuff, um. Because essentially, it's if you've been watching the boys as well, you'll you'll really like it, and that's all I'll say. Yeah. But you should, yeah. um, you should, and there's, yeah, that I I I've read them three times, I think the yeah the records because Reckoners series really good. Yeah. They are a very digestible series of books, and I I just yeah that's I've... quite nice to get. Sometimes you want a page turner, one that's just like. Oh, this is fresh before you get into the, the sort of like delve into Russia and stuff with in the, like the Stormlight Archives because it's so immersive and long. You kind of just want a couple of like they're only like 10, 13 hours long as opposed to 50, 58. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's like it's like Lord of the Rings times 100. That's the um, yeah, so. Um, um, so yeah, that's our number one is the Cosmere. Uh, well, uh, my number one. Not sure whether it'd be Russ's number one, but it's uh, my pretty much one. for the number. One. I yeah. think I disagree with some of the others, but I I read a few yeah. other different things that I really like. Um, yeah, but, I mean, yeah, which is why we've got some all good. mentions. I mean, I've cause... listened to all of those, yeah. so it's. Um, so you mentioned Wheel of Time. Yeah, um, I think the only reason, as an honourable mention, um, Wheel of Time isn't in my top five because I've not finished it. Um, I like, every, yeah, like every single person ever. Uh, apparently, like I've got stuck on the sixth book, um, and I was gonna re-listen to it again, um, but I wanted to get Ready Player Two and um, Rhythm of War done, which is the Brandon Sanderson's fourth book, and like you know, an Ernest Klein one, which is if people who know what Ready Player One is. Um, so, and then I'm gonna restart the Wheel of Time. Um, I really like the Wheel of Time. Um, I really it. It's got a, it's a very very interesting story, but it's just it's like thirteen books or eleven twelve books I can't remember, um, and it's <laughs> like they're all like forty hours long again. So I needed screen, kind of so I oh it might be I think, is it the Brandon Sanderson one like splits into two books at the end because basically Maybe. Robert Jordan died before he finished the Wheel of Time, and then Brandon Sanderson finished the Wheel of Time for him mm. with his notes. Um, and it's really, really cool. I just, I, I really, really like it. It's like, you know, it, the first book's always a bit of an odd one because you like, it, it kind of feels a very Tolkien-esque Fellowship of the Ringy. And it's just like, oh, this is, this is kind of like Lord of the Rings. It's like, but why is Gandalf a woman? Why do I fucking hate her? You know, it's just, it, but it's very like, it is kind yeah. of, but I, I really like it. And that's probably why it's not in my top series, but you know, you ask me it. again in a year. I haven't finished yeah, it yet. Yeah, so. Um, uh, so we probably should mention um, Patrick Rothfuss. So, yes, yeah. Um, um, I it is. We we're all waiting for the third book, right? Along with everyone else. <laughs> along with everyone else, and so, I, I like. We're things... not trying to. We're not trying to like pressure the guy, but. Um, yeah i know he's a bit like he's got like he keeps posting on like youtube about how anxious he is about like how he wants to like people keep coming up to him in the street and going like when's the third book where's the third book where's the third book um and so he's a bit sort of like uh you know it's he, he wants it to be good but and we all want it to be good because he's the, the king yeah. killer these for me truth. are are like another level of writing like they are yeah they are they don't feel like fantasy books like they are no. very very well written i think um yeah this is definitely a series to start but be just be aware it's not finished yeah. yet and yeah 
you know and you're probably going to see the movies before you see the <laughs> the first because sam raimi the guy who directed evil dead um and the first two spider-man movies um, with toby Maguire, he's gonna direct the trilogy of films oh dear i mean oh great but, um no, yeah, I, so... <laughs> well yes so no, say what you would about sam raimi he's, he's a quite a good director i think yeah. you know he's uh you know um so th- you'll probably see the end of it beforehand um you probably um uh, just like a touch on the wheel of time as well there's going to be a hbo series like game of thrones for the wheel of time so that's another reason why i want to mm. finish it before and i know um, that like before. what i find funny about game of thrones so we haven't really t- mentioned it is okay, a lot yeah. of people go they didn't know about it and they get shown it and then they're like oh these books are really good but they've not read anything else so like they no. think they're amazing they're not they're honestly not good no, i mean no. they're good and then they lose their way and they're just not and it goes all over the place and i i, I just find it like yeah. it's I, if, I, like, it's, it's, it's a massive thing everyone you either love it or you don't i i'm i fall in the, the category of i don't really like game of thrones as the books um i got really fed up reading them um i didn't audiobook them because i hated the narration and i got really fed up actually reading through them i just got bored um, I've, I've audiobooked um, all of them um that yeah. were out at the time and then i the tv show overtook it and i was like well to be honest the story in the books is disjointed it's obviously the guy didn't have a plan there's a lot of there's a lot of filler yeah. um and it's Which okay is, i can imagine to it but it, not for me it's like it, he, i imagine he didn't expect it to be quite as big as, as it was he hadn't had planned it all out which is no. and like you know we we've, we've got that there and i mean there's some other books that are also like i think like i discussed this again with liam cook this morning and he was like how have you not got the alloy of law the joe abercrombie not uh, sorry the joe I was abercrombie literally one. about to talk about yeah. the rule of law joe abercrombie yeah. series because i think they're because, really good because everyone tells me they're amazing and i cannot get on with them but it's just, it, but again, like it's all personal preference, right? It's mm-hmm. just maybe, uh, maybe you do love it, maybe you don't. That's cool. Um, but we've got a couple of other honourable mentions as well. Yeah. We've got like one that you and Byron love that I can't stand. Yeah, the Lies of Lot Lamora. So yeah, I, it is a three part series, but I wouldn't bother with the other two. Um, I think as a standalone, if you like the kind of Renaissance kind of um, that kind of style, you know, you've got that kind of. Um, What's the, what's the tv show that is kind um, of a bit like as well uh well it's it's if you think of it like it, peaky blinders a little bit mm, like yeah, that's what it reminds me of like when i listen to, just because of like that the gentleman sort of like yeah but gang. it's more like gangs of new york slash Ven- meets venice kind of venetian yeah. renaissance so it's but it is it's good uh i i really like it it's basically about um you know like street people who aren't above them yeah. below the law so they're almost like it's about about criminals and, and and gangs and so i really like it i think it's a really good series it does it does go on a little bit in and it loses its way in my opinion um i would just read the first book the second and third yeah. you take or leave it if you're really into it yeah it's i think if you like it you like it i find it quite tedious but that's more because i guess I don't know, just didn't didn't get on with it. And it's the same with like um I think you've got another one that I didn't get on with that yeah, you and the Byron Peter both like. V. Brett, um, the Painted yeah. Man, uh, the Demon Cycle series. So yeah. I really like this. This is like I like the concept of it where essentially at night demons come out uh, and but there's all the towns are warded and they have these like rangers that go out between the towns and everything has to be within a daylight's ride. Otherwise, you have to be an awarded place, but they they can they have ways to ward. It's like a lost art how to ward things, um, and they they kind of like go out into the wild to go longer distance to bring messages or in this kingdom. And it's this is one kingdom of many, and it's a little bit. Um, there are some stuff in there that's a bit stereotypical, and you could go as kind of cliched, but it's a really good story. Um, and I really like the way they're they're very quite fast paced and they're quite good books. I mean, there's about five or six, but they they're very good. I I would definitely recommend listening to them if you're yeah. uh, looking for something. It's it's an odd one. I've tried it multiple times, and I just find Peter V. Brett's writing style just not very good in my like. I just don't go on with him. Like you know, as a as a personal thing, um, and yeah, I didn't find the story captured me or grasped me after putting sort of like a bit of time in into it. Um, I guess it's just. 
how different people like different things right yeah. you know it's you know it's just one of those um but yeah i mean it's there's neither there's neither right or wrong um <laughs> on this so um i guess opinion so yeah um, i guess what i'd say um is just to sort of like finish up is like do you agree with like some of the stuff we said now i know we were a bit vague with like the stormlight stuff because i didn't want to spoiler it for anyone who's going to get into it but it is uh exceptional um but like yeah if you've i'm always up for suggestions like let us know in the comments below if we've missed out any of your favorite sort of uh, your favorite selections of books and stories and series of novels. I mean, obviously, you know, could have touched on the Horus Heresy, could have touched on uh, many other series that are out there. But um, yeah, do you agree or disagree? Do you think we're wrong? Do you think we're talking rubbish? Do you, um, do you make some suggestions below? Tell us where, tell us which you put in your top five um, of uh, series of books to listen to while painting. Um, and and also please uh, like and subscribe and hit the the bell notification for these. We're going to be putting out videos every day during the advent calendar on the run up to Christmas. So uh, let us know if, if that's the sort of thing that you like um, and you're enjoying these. Yep. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting some good suggestions below. And obviously as a disclaimer, as Les already touched on, it's our opinion. <laughs> so, um, yeah. You know, we're allowed to you, have, if you don't know like Brandon ones. Sanderson and you really like George R. R. Martin, then, you might dislike this video but that's fine you know everyone's yeah. got their own opinion so yeah it's completely um, cool right thanks for watching and we'll catch you soon